Atsugi Heng Erbe. On August 15, 1945, Emperor Hirohito made a radio broadcast announcing Japan's surrender to Allied forces, marking the end of World War II in Asia. Fifteen days later, on August 30th, General MacArthur arrived at Atsugi Naval Air Facility in Japan, to officially accept the surrender, and if the stories can be believed, he had to wade through the bodies of dead kamikaze pilots to do so. Supposedly, the pilots stationed at Atsugi slipped away to one of the hangar bays, and committed mass harakiri upon hearing the news, angered by the disgrace the surrender meant to their country. The pilots' souls stayed to haunt the hangar bay for all eternity. Servicemen have reported seeing red eyes floating in the darkness of the unlit hangar, and doors will slam at all hours of the night, even when there's nobody around to slam them. According to a similar story, it was the sailors stationed at the base, who killed themselves after the pilots took off for one final suicide run. That's if you believe the stories, officially, there's no mention of anything like that happening at Atsugi Naval Air Facility, although one report claims that, the pilots revolted against the Imperial Army after the surrender, and took control of the base for seven days before the Imperial Army was able to recapture it. A US newspaper mentions the kamikaze pilots committing harakiri at Atsugi, but it's almost certainly tongue-in-cheek since that sort of thing was actually happening in other parts of Japan. 29 Hanbury Street Jack the Ripper's surgical mutilation spree in the late 1880s drowned London in a sea of terror, and created one of the first worldwide media frenzies in history. Of the Ripper's five generally accepted victims, Annie Chapman was the second. Her body was discovered at 29 Hanbury Street on September 8, 1888, with a head nearly severed, and her uterus cut from her abdomen. The house at 29 Hanbury Street stood until 1970, when the northern half of the street was demolished to make way for a brewery, and that's when strange things started happening. According to the stories, the headless ghost of Annie Chapman, can still be seen wandering around the spot where her body was found, and every year on the anniversary of her death, a cold wind sweeps through the building at precisely 6 a.m., the time she supposedly took her last breath in the grip of a merciless killer. The Ostrich Inn John Jarman had a clever plan. His inn was conveniently situated on Colne Brook's main thoroughfare, a tempting sight for weary travelers dusty, and worn from the long road into London. But not all accommodations were created equal at the Ostrich Inn, for wealthy travelers, a special room was provided directly above the kitchen. Maybe they noticed that, the bed was nailed to the floor, maybe they didn't. Maybe they noticed the room gradually getting warmer. Then again, maybe they were too tired to care. But when those weary travelers settled in for the night, they got the fright of their lives. At the pull of a lever, the floor would open, and the bed would tip over a trap door, sending them kicking, and screaming into a waiting vat filled with boiling water. John Jarman allegedly killed over 60 people at the Ostrich, in the 17th century. With the help of his wife, he boiled them alive and then stacked the bodies in the cellar. And, of course, that's where the ghost story begins. The Ostrich Inn is still around, offering the perfect medley of local cuisine with a side of screaming misery, and death. Jarman's impromptu basement morgue is now the ladies' restroom, and customers claim to feel an unearthly chill when they walk into the room. The M staff has complained of sudden noises, flickering lights, and machinery turning itself on behind locked doors, all of it chalked up to the restless spirits of former tenants. The House of Death Just about everyone agrees that there's something sinister living at 14 West 10th Street in Greenwich Village, New York City. Exactly what it is, though, is up for debate, for over a century. The house has allegedly been the site of a string of macabre events, starting with rumors of a violent murder, suicide at the turn of the 20th century. According to the plaque in front of the house, 
The old brownstone was once the residence of Mark Twain, and more than a few people have claimed to see the author's ghostly visage pondering the dark comedy of life, or death, near the staircase. But a building isn't dubbed the house of death for something as benign as a kindly old wordsmith, ghost or not. The really terrifying incidents supposedly happened when actress and poet Jan Bryant Bartale occupied the house in the 60s. Within weeks, she began experiencing events straight out of Amityville, an icy hand brushing the back of her neck, footsteps following her around the empty house, the smell of things dying. One of her dogs would spend hours growling and bristling at an empty chair. Another dog died. Allegedly, the house's tenants were dropping like flies. Suicides, accidents, and murders claimed lives like a virulent strain of the plague. The events shook Bartale so much that, she called in a psychic medium, but that only made things worse. On the very first session, the medium went into a death-like trance, and spoke of bodies buried beneath the floorboards. There was a young girl under the house, she said, and the body of an aborted child. Her eyes shot open, and she declared that she was the spirit of a civil war, heir a woman whose husband had been killed. The medium then startled her small audience by screaming, I will never leave. The incident was enough to send the Bartels running. Jan managed to publish a book detailing the creepy events, Spindrift, Spray from a Psychic Sea, just weeks before committing suicide. But those could all be stories. What isn't a wild tale, however, was what happened at the house in November 1987, when defense attorney Joel Steinberg savagely murdered his six-year-old daughter, in a coke-fueled rage. Whether at the hands of violent spirits or plain, senseless human nature, the house has certainly lived up to its name. Black Hag's Cell In the land of leprechauns, and divine killer canines, ghosts are mellow fair, but Ireland's southern valleys hide a real screamer, it's said that old abbey, now just a mess of crumbling ruins in a secluded hollow in Limerick County, is haunted by the ghost of a satanic nun who was buried alive. The old sacristy was given the nickname Black Hag's Cell, by locals because it was there, that she was said to have performed her satanic rituals. And at night, her hair-raising screams echo over the hills. As for the dark nun's death, there are varying accounts. One claims that, she was found in a chair outside the nunnery, stone dead and face contorted in horror. It's said that the devil finally came to collect her soul, but left her tormented spirit to haunt the grounds. The other story is much darker, during a local skirmish between rival houses sometime in the 16th century, the nun was wounded by an arrow. Believing her to be dead, the Earl of Desmond buried her immediately. After terrified farmers reported hearing the nun's muffled screams, the grave was exhumed, but it was too late. She'd rubbed her fingertips bloody trying to scratch her way out of the coffin. Aside from the various legends, Old Abbey is mentioned in a historical context, only in medieval tax records. But the general consensus is that, it was built sometime at the end of the 13th century, and was dissolved in the 1500s. As for the tales, they most likely stemmed from propaganda promoted by King Henry VIII. Dot, but if you happen to be in the area at dusk, keep an ear out for the dying woman's screams of agony. They say she likes to creep up from behind you, 